Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and today I'm going to show you how to make a minion cake. I've had requests for how to make a 3D cake that stands up and other requests for a Despicable Me cake so here is 10 steps to making a 3D standing up minion cake. Step 1, you need to make a template for any 3D cake. So find the character that you want to make, get a picture of them, blow it up bigger in Word or whatever computer program you have and print it out in the size that you want your cake to be. And you're going to use that for a guide for how big the actual cake is but also for how big all the details on your cake are going to be as well. Step two, make your details. Now fondant details can be made up to a month in advance and left out to dry. Use the printout that you've made of your character to guide you on what size to make them. If you've never worked with fondant before, at the end of this video click on the banner to go to the How to Cook That channel and there's a fondant basics video there for you and a fondant recipe video or if you're on your phone then at the end of the video just click on How to Cook That just below the video to go to the channel. To make the pupil of the minion eye, roll out some brown fondant and using a piping tip cut out a circle, then roll out some black and cut out a smaller circle and place it in the centre of the eye. You'll notice that I'm making two even though I only need one, but I like to make spares of these pieces that I'm making ahead just in case one gets broken or dropped on the floor or something like that. Take some black gel colour and paint lines around the edges of the eye to make it look more realistic. And then take a tiny bit of white and put it in the top edge of the black to give that reflection that makes it look a bit more alive. To make the goggle, you're going to have to find something in your kitchen that's the right size and then wrap it around in non-stick baking paper. Roll out some black fondant and wrap that around the bottle and then stand the bottle upright. Then I like to use something to hold the knife in place otherwise I always go crooked and then just keep the knife still and turn the bottle around to make a straight edge at the top and the bottom. To make the front of the goggle cut out a circle in the size of your bottle and then cut out a smaller circle from the centre of that. Then take some edible silver lustre dust, someone asked me where you get that from, cake decorating stores will have all this sort of thing. If you don't have a cake decorating store next to you then there's heaps of them online, just google it and you'll find some. Then you just get a dry paintbrush, dip it in the lustre dust and brush it on the fondant while it's still moist and it will stick and make it look like it's silver. Using a small round piping tip, gently push in some indents to make it look like rivets. If you don't have a piping tip then you can use a straw or just look through your drawer and find anything that's small and round. And then use the back of a knife to make an indent around the goggle. Cut out a rounded groove on opposite sides and that's so that the goggle can fit snugly onto your minion face. And then you want to leave that to dry completely so that'll take at least a few days. If you're in a hurry then you can add some Tylos powder to your fondant that makes it set harder quicker. The goggles have two little rods that sit where the strap joins to them so make two little round snakes, cut them the same length, indent them by rubbing the back of a knife on them and then just dust them with your silver luster dust and they're done. Next we want to make the groove symbol for the front pocket. To do that cut out a circle then using a sharp knife cut a square or a diamond shape out of that and then for the centre roll a small ball of black fondant and squash it into a circle in the middle. Put a little cut in it so it looks a bit like a Pac-Man and then roll a little snake of black fondant and put it going across so it kind of looks like a G. To make your buttons, they're pretty simple, just roll a little ball of black fondant Get something that is a flat circle to flatten the middle of it. I'm just using the back of my paintbrush. Again, just look in your drawer, find what you've got, the bottom of a pencil, anything like that. Push it into the middle of the button and then get some blue fondant and roll it into a super thin snake and then crisscross it over your button using a skewer to push it in so that it looks like thread going into holes on the button and then leave those to dry. Then make some thin black snakes for your hair, curve it over and leave it long at the bottom for poking into the cake. Make more than you think you'll need in case some snap because they're very thin and leave those on a sheet of baking paper to dry as well. Step number three, you need a frame to support your 3D cake. For this minion we're going to use two thick cake boards. One is 8cm in diameter and one is 15cm. The smaller one is for the bottom where the minion tapers down and the 15 centimetre one is for the middle of the cake. You're also going to need two 32 centimetre wooden cake spikes and another four shorter cake spikes. 
Place your round cake boards in the centre of your wooden cake board and drill two holes through both pieces of cardboard and through the base. The position of these holes is fairly close together because they need to be in the place of where the minion's legs are so that we can hide them. That will give you a frame like this with your two poles and then your two cake boards. But you're still going to need something under that bottom cake board to support the weight of the cake so that it doesn't just slide down. So to do that we're going to drill two more holes, one just in front and one just behind the ones you've just done. Insert a stick into those holes and use a pencil to mark the height at the base of the board and then measure three centimetres higher than that and cut them both to that length and that allows room for the feet and the legs under that little minion body. If your drill holes are not super tight fitting on those sticks then you're going to need to glue them into place. Put your smaller baseboard on top and then you're ready for step four. You need to bake your cakes. Now for 3D cakes they will always take more cake than you think that they will. This is a relatively small minion and it took eight cakes. Number five, make your frosting. You need to put frosting over your cake so it has something to stick the fondant to. You can use ganache or here I'm using buttercream. All the recipes for the frostings and the cakes are on the website how to cook that. To make buttercream all you do is add softened butter and icing mixture together, mix it with a spoon until it's slightly combined, then use the electric mixer to whip it up until it's lighter in colour and fluffy, this will take a few minutes. And then add a little bit of milk to get it the consistency you want it, you probably only need about one tablespoon and continue to whip it until it looks pale and fluffy like this. Number six, assembly. Put your supports into place and your base cake board. Cover it in a thin layer of buttercream and add your first layer of cake. More buttercream, then your next layer of cake. Then I want you to take the last two cake spikes, spike one of them down to the cake board and mark off that level and cut those two sticks to the exact same height. Poke them both into the cake, add your next cake board on top, more buttercream and the next layer of cake. The reason you need this cake board in the centre with the spikes to support it is because when you're stacking this many cakes on top of each other it gets quite heavy and the top cakes are just going to squash the bottom cakes and then your cake's going to go all out of shape. Add your next layer of buttercream and repeat this until you get to the height of your printout or your template that you've done. Number seven is carving. Now we're making a minion so carving's fairly simple. It's domed over the top and domed in at the bottom. Number eight is your crumb coat, which all that means is a super thin coat of your frosting over the entire cake. And the purpose of this is to capture any of the crumbs in that so that when we do our next coat, we're not getting crumbs through it. Once you've done your crumb coat, place it in the fridge and let it firm up. Step nine, put a layer of frosting over the entire cake, using your palette knife to smooth it off as best as you can. Then leave it for about 15 minutes. If it's hot where you live, put it in the fridge for that time. Then using some paper towel, place it over your buttercream and gently rub it to smooth out any imperfections. And once you've finished, put it back in the fridge. Then step number 10, we've done all our preparation work and now we're actually gonna decorate our cake. Now this little guy has a strap around at eye level so we're going to do our fondant in two sections and use this strap to hide the join. So take a skewer and draw a line roughly where that strap level will be. If you're not sure use your printout that you've made of the minion you're making to use that as your guide to where it's going to be. Roll out the fondant and place it over the top of the cake gently smoothing it down and then trim it to the level that you drew just before. Then I like to wrap the baking paper around the cake so I know how big I need to roll out the next piece of fondant. Roll it out accordingly and then trim off the top edge nice and straight. Take two balls of yellow fondant and place them just above where the arm level is going to be on the cake because they'll drop down a little bit and secure them in place with a toothpick. Now don't worry we're going to get that out in just a minute so nobody's going to eat it. Then wrap your fondant right around like a coat that's on backwards so that the front of it is all smooth and the join is at the back and then gently squeeze the arms and pull out the toothpicks as you do. Now I should have positioned these arms forward immediately so that they didn't dry out before I wanted to move them so just make sure you do that just bring them forward and put them in that position. Then wrap the base of your minion body in the blue jeans colour and then mould some of your blue colour around each of the support sticks that we've got there to hide those. Roll out some more of your blue and cut it to make the overall shape. 
If you're not happy just doing that by hand, then use the printout that you made as a guide. Cut that out of your paper and then cut around that using a knife. Position it onto your cake and smooth it down around the bottom and add some little balls of blue fondant across the back. Shorten your arms to the right length and wrap each hand in a strip of black and push it into place. Here you can see because the fondant had started to dry in the other position we've got creases on the arms and it's not totally smooth that's why I told you to bring it forward. Take another piece of blue fondant shaped just like you did for the back and put it over the top of the hands so that it looks like the hands are in the pocket and then push it around under the front and smooth it out. Then cut two strips of blue and use it to make the straps on each side of your overalls going over where the minion's shoulders would be if he had shoulders. Then secure them into place using a button. If your fondant's not sticking, just put a little bit of water on your finger and just put a tiny bit of water just under where you want it to stick. Using the end of a skewer, make clothing creases so it looks like the overalls are stretching up to join to the button. Then add your front pocket with the groove symbol that you made earlier and then use your skewer to make little sewing holes around the edges of the pocket. And I made the pocket at the top just stick out a bit so it looked like it actually was a pocket, not just something sewn on. Also make a pattern around all the edges of your overalls, including the straps and down around where his hands are, so it starts to look like it's fabric instead of fondant. To make your shoes, simply roll an oval of black, flatten it a bit at the back and position it into place. Put your goggle strap around the cake covering the join in the fondant and use the back of your knife to put a line around the middle of that strap. Next to make the eye take some white fondant and make a domed circle shape using the palm of your hand and then put the pupil that you made before in the centre of that and place it on the cake. Using a piece of cardboard make an indent for your smile. Now it's time for some hair replacement. Poke some holes in the head and gently poke in your hair. Add a top yellow eyelid and a little bit of yellow to cover the strap up close to the eye on either side. And then use two paper lollipop sticks to support the goggle. You want to poke them right into the cake and then just rest the goggle on top of them. And then add each of the little rods that you made earlier to either side of the goggles just where they join to the strap. You can then put lollies around him and add your candles and your minions ready to party. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Click on the How to Cook That banner to go to the channel for more dessert, cake and chocolate tutorials. And thanks to everyone who's subscribed and clicks on like and shares the videos. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you next week. Bye.